I have had over 25 of these e-bikes, and in the past I haven't liked them, but I've turned a new leaf, and I want to tell you all the things to look for when buying one of these delightful e-bikes. Let's talk about it. Hey everyone, Josh here again with Daily Mountain Bike Rider, and today we're talking about e-bikes again. And in the past, I've told the companies over in China who send me these bikes for free to please not send them to me. I do not want them. I've kicked them over, but they keep sending them. And I realized something. These actually do serve a purpose. For somebody who wants to cruise around their local town on paved roads or on uh, railroad tracks that have been turned into like commuting tracks, these bikes actually are pretty great. So what I wanna do is go through each of these five new e-bikes, there's a couple more as well, and pinpoint the things that I would look for if I was buying one of these e-bikes and what I think is actually worth getting. So let's jump into each of them. First up, talking about things I like, I'm using the most standard run-of-the-mill, big-wheeled e-bike that runs you about $1,600. This one's by a company called KBO, and it's a solid e-bike, and there's a couple of small things I like about this standard size. First up, this overall shape, you'll notice that this is a bigger bike. I'm five foot nine, and that would be the shortest I would say if you get this, only because it's a lot to handle. The nice thing though is you have these bigger cushioned wheels so that it deadens some of the road or any of the gravel noise. You have a simple one um, chain ring up front, seven speeds out back, which is really all you need on these e-bikes. And when you get up to the handlebars, it's a very simple to understand, one shifter here, your throttle here, typical simple kind of non-responsive non-hydraulic brakes a bell and then your little power adjustment and power button easy to read screen overall this bike is simple it's going to work really well and because it's so simple it will probably last so good job kbo these type of bikes are simple find a good deal on them you're going to enjoy them all right next up is this VeloWave, and that's actually a company that you've seen me talk about before when i first introduced these types of e-bikes and this is a company who does a lot of things right and has taken from the notes that i would say are some of the best things in a bike so let me walk you through this one specifically first up is the overall shape of the bike allows you to stand in the middle and not have a top tube here that gets in the way so for somebody who is a little shorter maybe like five five this bike's going to be great because they can stand in the middle feel comfortable maneuvering before they jump onto it. Another thing is that the battery is on the back, which means that the weight is a little further back and so it's a little easier to maneuver as a bike. It has the bike luggage rack and I actually really like these wheels. They don't have spokes and they don't need tensioning, they stay solid. And for an e-bike like this, you really don't wanna mess with the wheels too much. I really like the tires too, these are Kenda tires, it's a name brand, so you know you're getting quality. Moving up to the bars, this is the best cockpit that I've seen. It has a simple screen, a simple throttle. It has a grip shift, which actually works pretty well compared to the little cheap shifters up here and hydraulic brakes. I always prefer hydraulic brakes for these bikes because you need some extra braking power. There's only one negative to this bike. This VeloWave goes 20 miles an hour, but it weighs 79 pounds. It's the heaviest e-bike that I've had so far. And I think it's because the build quality is so high. It has these extra racks. Um, and a big battery. And so because of that, this thing is a beast to lift into a truck tailgate, even to put on a bike rack. So just consider that when looking at a bike that's this high end. But good job, Billowave. Next up is this Escute. And this is also kind of a run of the mill standard looking e-bike, but I think this has way more benefits than the big tire ones. As you can see from this company, Escute, you have skinnier tires, which these aren't actually skinny. These would be like standard mountain bike tires that I would use off-road. And so this is gonna give you enough cushion, but this bike is a lot easier to maneuver. Most of your weight is in this down tube right here. You have the step through, so it's easier to get on. Again, the one uh, chain ring up front, seven gears out back, very simple way to operate. Throttle here, shifters, simple. Uh, mechanical brakes or not hydraulic brakes and overall you can see the handlebars are bent back a little bit which gives this more of a city feel of a comfortable ride you've got a little bit of suspension a little light you're not going to be doing anything heavy duty on this bike but man for just riding an e-bike around town this is the type of bike to look for it's simple it looks good it's going to look cool for years to come because it's all black and wow great job Escute. I like these type of bikes. Now, my goal in this video is to be positive. Sometimes though, in order to be positive, you have to point out what isn't worth buying. And this bike is the BFI Sport. It's not a bad e-bike. It'd be fine if you wanted to buy it. You can click the link to check it out. But there's a lot of things on this e-bike I personally would avoid that I wanna point out to you and who this bike might be for. So it's got a standard look to it. It's got some bigger tires. It looks like it has a little storage case right here. But as you get closer to the bike, you notice some things that I would tell you to avoid. First up is you have two chain rings up front and still seven out back, and that just makes it a little more cumbersome. 
When you have big batteries, you don't need more speeds. The less speeds, the easier it is to maintain. And besides that, the rest of the bike is pretty normal. You have your simple display, you have your gear shifters, your throttle. And I guess this is what I would say about having the front chainring, is you have more shifting of gears up front, which can confuse a lot of people. But then we get right here, and this bag looks like a storage bag, but you notice all the wires going in. And when you open this thing up, all the electronics of this e-bike are just sitting here in this neoprene, whatever you would call it, case. And I just feel like that is not a very good design. It doesn't keep this protected out in the elements very much. And overall, the bike shape looks good. I wish the electronics were internal and it had a single chain ring up front. And this bike would be great for a really good price, like 900 bucks or a thousand bucks. But as it stands, I might steer away from this one. Now, here's an e-bike that I really like and I think looks really cool. It has some stuff I love about it, but there's also some drawbacks that I would like to point to. First thing you'll notice, there's no adjustable seat back here, which means this bike is designed to be a little more compact, like for city use. And I kind of like that. It's telling you you're not gonna go on a long, comfortable ride. It's just for getting around and looking really cool. Now, it has a rear shock and some people would say that's a benefit, right? Well, not really. This doesn't really work, which you don't want it to. You don't need full suspension for a bike like this. I do like that it has the one chain ring up front, the seven gears, it's down lower. And then you come up here and you notice it also has a throttle, kind of your simple setup. But the one touch that I've never seen is this actually has turn signals that work and a big headlight, which means this really would be great buzzing through the city, letting people know when you're turning or where you're going. And to me, this is a huge win. Now, the only negative about this bike is, is it's about 74 pounds, which is quite deceiving. And its top speed is only 15 miles an hour, where others are 20. So this bike is great if you want something a little more compact to buzz around and like the styling of it more than anything else. And last but not least, Askew actually sent me two bikes. And I think this one is a really good for one specific person. And that's somebody that's a bigger person, somebody over six foot two, maybe somebody pushing 300 or more pounds. This bike would be great for you. You can just tell looking at this bike, it's very big. It's got huge tires. It's got more spread out cockpit. The seat goes a lot higher than other bikes and it's just built tough. This down tube is super thick. It's got great welds on it. Again, the one chain ring up front, the simple interface with a throttle up here, a nice cool integrated screen, which is something that Askew does. It's kind of a neat feature, but overall this bike is going to be great for somebody who wants to get out, wants to ride a bike, maybe hasn't done it for a long time or is worried about not having the physical ability to do so, this bike is going to be great. All right, so I turned the new leaf. I've been more positive. There are things about this bike worth buying. If I was going to buy any of these bikes today, I'd probably go with the VeloWave. Um, even though it looks a little different with the different spoked wheels and the smaller cut through, I feel like that bike is going to last the longest. It has hydraulic disc brakes, an easy interface, all the things that I think are worth buying. If you wanna know any more about any of these bikes, what I like or maybe don't like, battery capacity, top speed, distance, all that kind of stuff, I don't test them that thoroughly. So click the links below, get all the information. You know what time it is. Don't watch a guy talking too much about e-bikes, but get out there, ride your bike, and make sure you do it every day.